És Ákos, meddig fogsz beszélni most? Egy fél hát, óra, vagy húsz perc? Hát valami a kettő között, valami 20-25-30. Jó. Jó. Nem, nem, nem teszteltem le. Uh-huh. Uh, now we are live at oh. uh, YouTube. Uh, okay, we are already live. Okay. So should I start? Okay. 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 Uh, so let me somehow uh, share this. Uh, uh, öncelikle herkese merhaba. Uh, bugünkü konumuz Kidan dili ve Kidan dili üzerine araştırmalar. Uh, esas olarak da Macaristan'da yapılan çalışmalar. Uh, bu Kidan dili bizle, Türklerle uh, es Türkçe çalışmalarla yakından ilişkili bir dil ve yakından ilişkili bir halk. Uh, en eski Türk yazılarından beri uh, Türklerle çok yakındı bu Kidanlılar. Uh, ama ne yazık ki Türkiye'de Kidan ve Kidan çalışmaları hemen hemen hiç bilinmiyor. Bizim için bir muamma. Bu konuyu doğrudan uzman olan bir hocamızdan ve uzman olan bir merkezden uh, Macaristan'da dinleyeceğiz. Uh, Akoş, uh, now I talk just shortly about Kidan and Kidan okay. studies. Please freely you begin. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Ilmaz for inviting me uh, to talk in this series about the history of uh, uh, Mongolistics. Uh, I, I'm about to share my screen. Tell me if it is visible. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, we oh, can great. see the screen. Okay. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the history of Hungarian Kitanology. Uh, and uh, especially to uh, uh, especially about some uh, achievements in the decipherment of the uh, Kitan scripts. Uh, okay, first I'd like to uh, tell you a few words about uh, the Kitans themselves, who were one of the uh, nomadic. Uh, Uh, one of the nomadic uh, peoples uh, of the steppe area, of the grassland area, who could actually create their own uh, state uh, during the history. Uh, as you can see in this uh, map, uh, in, in the green uh, the green area represents uh, the, the territories that uh, belonged to the Liao state. Uh, during the 10th and 11th and the 12th centuries. As you can see, it covers most of what is now Mongolia, uh, northern parts, northwestern parts of China, Manchuria, uh, north parts of Kansu and, uh, and some parts of uh, Shanxi as well. Uh, and uh, to the uh, northeast up to what is now the border Uh, area of uh, the Russian Federation, Mongolia and Kazakhstan. So this is uh, this is a huge uh, a territory that was unified under the Kitans uh, during the 10th, 10th century. Uh, a few words about the history of the Kitans. Uh, The, the name is Kitan and uh, it is represented in Chinese script uh, as Qidan. It, it is the uh, present pronunciation of these two characters. So there's still a debate how uh, the actual pronunciation of this, uh, uh, of this name of the people was uh, uh, what it was li uh, actually like, how it uh, actually sounded, but uh, Uh, the uh, uh, as for now, uh, uh, there is uh, an agreement among scholars that it it uh, sound sounded some somehow like Titan, and uh, later on we will uh, return to this uh, to this question, to the pronunciation of of the of the name of this uh, people. The first mentions about uh, the Kitans uh, were already in the sixth century uh, and it was uh, actually the Weishu, one of the uh, of the Chinese uh, 
uh, historiographical uh, uh, works of, of, of the famous uh, 24 uh, historiographic works. So Wei Shu already mentions the Titans. Uh, as for now, uh, scholars think that uh, the Chitans were uh, actually of uh, uh, of Siam Bay origin. Siam Bay is uh, one, also one of the great uh, steppe area peoples, and uh, we now think that uh, their name uh, were uh, pronounced as somehow as Serbi in these uh, times, represented by these two Chinese characters that are pronounced now in the modern Mandarin as Siempe. Uh, of course, this uh, pronunciation is not representative for the for the time when uh, they were used uh, in the Wei Shu. So uh, that is why we think that uh, according to our knowledge about uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, about the uh, Chinese writing and the uh, and our assumption uh, on the pronunciation of uh, old uh, old Chinese, uh, we now think that uh, these two characters were pronounced as Serbi. Uh, they lived together uh, on the on the grasslands with many other uh, uh, steppe peoples, and uh, in the seventh and eighth centuries, uh, together with the Uyghurs. Uh, uh, about whom uh, you have uh, already uh, uh, you have already great knowledge, uh, and uh, after the the fall of the famous Anlushan rebellion in uh, in 755, uh, uh, the Kitans the Kitans became vessels vessels of the Uyghurs, and they uh, uh, they were actually the the vessels uh, until. The the end of the uh, the, uh, the fall of the of the uh, Uyghur uh, Khaganate in uh, in 840, and uh, as as long as until the emergence of a great leader uh, who was Yelu Apaoti, uh, 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 there were not really uh, other uh, uh, important. Uh, events in, in their history. But when Yelu Apo emerges uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, from the uh, tribe leaders, uh, he unites uh, the Kitans. And uh, in, in the beginning of the 10th century, at the beginning of the 10th century, uh, he, became, he, he becomes the, the uh, utmost leader of, these, uh, of this uh, tribal conglomeration. And uh, and uh, he is the uh, supreme leader of the Kitans uh, until his death. And uh, it, uh, only in uh, 1916, uh, it, it is only uh, 19, uh, sorry, uh, 916, uh, when the uh, Liao Dan uh, dynasty is officially formed. And uh, Yelu Apoichi only receives the title Taizu uh, when he's already, uh, uh, when he already died. And uh, he gets this uh, Taizu title uh, posthumously. The, uh, the Taizu title uh, in the uh, Chinese uh, system of the emperors uh, always designates the first uh, emperor of a certain dynasty. So this is his uh, posthumous uh, 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 name. Okay, that, uh, that was a very short uh, summary about their uh, history and now let us talk a little bit about the Kitan language. Uh, so when uh, uh, the Mongolian Empire uh, comes to existence in the 13th century, the Kitans uh, are uh, subdued by the uh, by the Mongols, and uh, they uh, actually they already uh, subdued uh, uh, firstly uh, by the Qin dynasty, the 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 Jurchens, and the, when the uh, Mongols, uh, the Mongol Empire comes to existence, uh, both uh, the Jurchens and the Kitans are uh, uh, are under uh, the Mongolian rule. 
So, uh, but the, the, the Kitans, the people is still there. Some of them flee to, to the uh, Western uh, areas, but uh, most of the population remains where they are and uh, uh, slowly they, uh, they uh, merge into the, uh, the, the huge conglomeration of peoples uh, during the Mongol and later the UN times. Uh, uh, so uh, their uh, language, their writing is, uh, uh, is losing its importance and it is forgotten uh, after, uh, after all. And uh, it, it, it is uh, basically unknown for a, for a very long time after the, the collapse of the uh, pre jingisid uh, empires, and uh, it, it is only the recent uh, uh, research. Uh, the re uh, it is only actually the the research of the past uh, century uh, that uh, that makes it clear that uh, the Kitan language and the Kitan peoples uh, uh, belong uh or actually are related uh to uh to mongolian uh, language and to mongolian people uh as uh, there are uh, many different uh, characteristics uh of uh, mongolian and uh, mongolian proper and uh, and kitan now we think that uh kitan probably uh, belonged to a branch uh, uh, of languages that was separate from the from Mongolian proper. Uh, that means that they did not have a, a direct common ancestor, and uh, that is why that uh, since the uh, coinage of this term paramongolic by Yang Hunan in uh, 2003, we are calling this uh, branch of languages paramongolic. I will talk a little bit uh, in detail about that later. <clears throat> Actually, the uh, the branch of philology uh, uh, that is called Kitanology now is also a relatively recently uh, coined term. So, uh, like twenty years ago, no no one actually spoke spoke about Kitanology. It, it is also a relatively uh, recent term. Uh, a few words about the main sources, and I have to emphasize that these are only the main sources and not all of them. Uh, but uh, in a short lecture like this, uh, we cannot go uh, into uh, uh, deeper details. So uh, I will talk about only the, the main ones. The first of all is, uh, is the Liao uh, Shi, the, the official history of the Liao uh, empire of the Liao state, uh, but uh, we have to handle this source with care because it was only uh, compiled uh, uh, in, in the 14th century, so that is more than uh, two uh, centuries after the collapse of the of the Kitan state. Uh, and it, uh, but uh, what is uh, very important here is that this uh, historiographic, uh, historiographical work contains a glossary, a, Chinese, uh, a Kitan Chinese glossary. And uh, it is a very important source about the language uh, as uh, only uh, when the first uh, Kitan script uh, inscriptions were found uh, in the past century, uh, had we uh, uh, access to to Kitan monuments, language monuments, but up until that time we had only these uh, uh, Kitan sources available in Chinese scripts, uh, Chinese script only. The other uh, important source is the Qidan Guozhi. Uh, it was an unofficial uh, historiographical work, but uh, the Liao Shi uh, contained. Uh, some parts of the Qidan uh, Guozhi. So it was, uh, all, although it was only an unofficial uh, source, the official sources also used uh, its material. And let us jump now uh, uh, a huge uh, period of time and uh, uh, to, the, to the beginning of the uh, 20th century. 
uh, so as I told you, the the Kitan uh, language and script was forgotten for like 700 uh, uh, years. And in the beginning of the uh, 20th century, in uh, 1922, a Belgian missionary uh, called uh, Louis Kervin, or uh, uh, his Chinese name was Meiling Rui, uh, he found the first epitaphs, ep epitaphs uh, bur buried in, uh, in, chi in uh, China. Uh, actually, he didn't uh, have ex uh, direct access to the inscriptions, but he had some uh, Chinese scholars uh, uh, to copy the inscriptions for him, because these uh, inscriptions usually belong to uh, uh, burial uh, places, and these burial uh, chambers were uh, most of, uh, most of the time they were underground. And many times, like in this case, uh, they were uh, covered by, uh, by water. So uh, it was very difficult to, uh, to get access to, to these uh, inscriptions. But uh, anyway, he uh, got some uh, Chinese uh, literati who uh, copied the inscriptions uh, for him. First, he thought that uh, these uh, inscriptions uh, belonged uh, to the uh, Liao Taozong emperor, but later scholarship found out that uh, it was a, uh, there was a mistake um, in the dating of this inscription. So uh, now it is clear that uh, the owner of this tomb uh, and the inscriptions was uh, Shenzong emperor of Liao and his wives. Uh, so that was the first uh, uh, unearthing of of, uh, of Kitan script uh, for many centuries, and uh, they kept uh, finding uh, other inscriptions uh, during the uh, during the first first half of the 20th century. But the uh, real uh, acceleration of findings and the uh, and the uh, numbers uh, uh, in in numbers uh, only the second half of the century uh, produced uh, uh, higher numbers uh, of the findings so once uh, scholars had the these numbers increased during the 20th century they had access to more and more uh, sources and they could start to work on the uh, decipherment of the script because up until now, uh, the Kitan script is uh, not uh, deciphered. So let us talk about now the Kitan script a little bit. Uh, as you may know, there were two uh, Kitan uh, 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 script systems. And uh, for a very long time, uh, scholars uh, couldn't even uh, make a difference. They couldn't uh, have distinguished these two systems from each other. Uh, for instance, uh, Ligeti, uh, the famous Hungarian uh, philologist and orientalist, uh, thought uh, at, uh, by the time that uh, this uh, Kitan small script, the small script was actually uh, the Uyghur Mongol script. Uh, we now, of course, know that it is uh, not true, but uh, by the time they couldn't uh, uh, tell the difference between uh, Kitan large script and Kitan uh, small script. Uh, in this uh, chart, uh, you can see uh, the Kitan Kit large script that was introduced by uh, uh, Abaoji himself, so by the emperor, uh, in uh, 920. And uh, it, is, it was made, it was uh, compiled uh, after, uh, in, in a Chinese pattern. So uh, if someone reads uh, Chinese, he uh, he or she sh uh, will know the the system. It, it means that one uh, character represents a whole word, regardless of the number of syllables. Of course, in Chinese, the uh, the number of syllable uh, syllables uh, 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 represented by a single character is one, but in Kitan that was not the case. So a, a single character could represent a whole word of uh, more than one syllables. Uh, so it is logographic um, in this aspect, just like uh, Chinese. 
but uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, uh, it's not syllabographic because it's uh, it's uh, not uh, necessarily representing it, it is not re necessarily representing only one uh, uh, syllable. Uh, so this is uh, because of the uh, characteristic of the Kitan language itself, which is polysyllabic and agglutinative. Uh, very di uh, very different. Uh, uh, it is a very di different system from that of the of the Chinese. Uh, and here's a chart of Kitan small script. So uh, someone who doesn't uh, know the two systems may not seem uh, obvious differences uh, between uh, Kitan small and Kitan large script. But there is uh, and, uh, there are some very uh, great uh, differences between the two systems. So Kitan small script, unlike uh, Kitan large script, is syllabographic. That is one character to one syllable, which means that since uh, uh, Kitan is a polysyllabic uh, language, that, that means uh, not only one syllable can form a single word, uh, that uh, more, uh, more than one of these graphemes uh, may constitute a single lexeme, a single word. So when uh, they were using Kitan small script and they had uh, a polysyllabic uh, a Kitan uh, word to write, they had to combine uh, these characters and they they just uh, put these characters next to each other. Uh, so that is why Professor Kara called this uh, Kitan small script as Kitan assembled script, because uh, they put as many characters next to each other as uh, it was necessary to write down a single word. So if it was two syllable words, uh, word, they used two, two characters. If, if, if it was three syllable word, they used three uh, characters and so on. Okay, here's uh, 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 a, a mirror uh, that uh, was, uh, uh, the, the backside of which was written in Kitan small script. Uh, as you can see in this, uh, can you see my uh, uh, cursor? Yes, I can. Okay, so like like here, you, you will see uh, a few uh, Kitan small script characters combined together in one block. Or here also, you will find here uh, at some places where there was uh, there was uh, only a short word, one uh, grapheme would suffice if it was a single syllable word. But whenever they uh, needed um, more than one syllables, they uh, uh, made up blocks like this to uh, uh, to represent a, a polysyllabic uh, word. So this is a mirror from this period. Uh, in uh, here, uh, we are seeing- Akush, uh, uh, your microphone has a problem. Oh, sorry. Uh, now, can you hear it? Wait. Hmm. Sorry. Now, can you hear me? And şu an duyamıyorum. Duyan var mı acaba? Can you hear me? We hear you. Yeah. Okay. Like maybe it was only at uh, Professor Elmas. Uh, uh, so uh, here we see the famous uh, Taozong inscription. On the left side, you will see the uh, Kitan small script. Uh, and on the right, uh, you will see the uh, Chinese uh, uh, version. So this is very important because here uh, we are we see uh, the same text uh, translated uh, to Chinese uh, from the original Kitan, and uh, this is this is of course very important uh, when uh, an unknown um, script is about to decipher. So here also we will see some uh, characters. Uh, 
uh, that are representing only uh, one syllable, and these are single characters, and uh, you will see groups of or blocks of uh, characters that are representing polysyllabic uh, words. Uh, otherwise, the, uh, and here uh, here it is uh, a very well readable uh, Chinese translation uh, of the of the whole text. The next one uh, uh, is uh, on the left side. We see a, a coin uh, from the uh, Taozong uh, Shouchang uh, uh, imperial uh, period, with uh, uh, with uh, Kitan small script on it. And on the right, we see the Yelu Chaozhi epitaph uh, cover page uh, or cover stone, actually, uh, 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 from uh, 1082. It is also with uh, Kitan small script. So these are uh, very nice and very representative examples of the Kitan small script. Why I talk uh, a little bit more about the Kitan small script than about the Kitan large script. It is because if we have any chance to decipher uh, the Kitan script, we have to start with uh, Kitan small script. And it is because uh, it is a uh, uh, syllabic uh, writing. So it represents, it, it has, uh, uh, it uh, represents uh, syllables and it uh, represents uh, sound values. Unlike uh, the Kitan large script, which, which is, uh, as I told you, is uh, logographic and it represents a whole word. So uh, if, if we uh, have a chance, and actually we do have a good chance uh, in, in deciphering the, in the Kitan uh, writing system, we have to start with the Kitan small script. Okay. Uh, let me now uh, say a few words about the Hungarians who uh, uh, made research about uh, the uh, the K Kitan scripts and language. Uh, there will be some uh, overlapping parts, as I heard Bayerma uh, Kaptagayeva's uh, uh, lecture. So uh, excuse uh, uh, excuse me for uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, if you hear something that is being repeated. Uh, so, uh, Professor Ligeti's uh, first paper about the Kitans was uh, as early as in 1927, uh, and he wrote a, um, a very important article about the uh, two, two types of the Kitan script. Uh, but by the time uh, we, uh, he or uh, the general knowledge about the Kitan, uh, the two uh, systems of the Kitan script was very basic. So uh, of course now we know um, much uh, more about that. He uh, had some expeditions to Inner Mongolia and Manchuria uh, uh, in the end of the 20s and the beginning of, of the 30s of the past century, and he made uh, reports about uh, scholarly reports about those expeditions. One was uh, written in French for the Hungarian Academy of Sciences about it was a preliminary report uh, on the uh, exp expedition in uh, inner mongolia uh, it is available it is still available uh, this uh, uh, scholarly report and he also uh, written uh, he has also written uh, or he uh, also wrote uh, uh, popular book about his uh, travels and expedition and it, uh, the title of which uh, was Sharga uh, Istanak Sharga Emberek in Hungarian. It means uh, it, it is not a very uh, PC term now, but it meant uh, yellow gods, yellow people. And uh, it, it was a very uh, popular book of the times. And in, in this, uh, he also mentions that in Trufeng uh, or, or Olanhad, so this in this uh, inner Mongolian city, uh, he had the chance to to buy uh, Kitan coins, but unfortunately, uh, as of now, we don't know uh, anything about the whereabouts of these coins. It would be really great to have them. And uh, in the first issue of the uh, Acta Orientalia uh, of Hungary, um, he also wrote an important article about uh, 
the words of civil, civilization uh, in uh, Inner Asia uh, that were uh, transcribed in uh, Chinese. And uh, in this article, he also writes about the Kitans. Here, here is the first uh, uh, article of Ligatis. It, it is in Hungarian uh, from uh, 1927. So it, uh, the title is The Kitan People uh, and Language. Uh, a photo about uh, Ligatis expedition uh, on which, uh, uh, in, in which photo we can see him together with his uh, Chinese and Mongolian uh, helpers. Uh, here is the part from uh, Yellow Gaz Yellow People where he talks about uh, buying the Kitan uh, coins. Uh, it goes, uh, I must uh, contented myself with, it, with getting secondhand copies of the Kitan Emperor's inscriptions of unknown script, along with those of the Chinese texts found next to them, as well as to take note of the locations of some city ruins and the few traditions. I also bought the Kitan coins offered by the inn owner in Nachingo. Uh, then I continued my way to Wang Zemiao. So here is the part where he talks about buying the coins, but unfortunately there is no uh, other information about them. Uh, so Ligati never returned to Asia, but uh, in his uh, uh, articles, he did uh, return to, to the topic of the Kitans. Uh, uh, in, in later times. So he, in his articles of 1950, 1955, 59, 60, 61, 70, he uh, revisited the, the topic of the, of the uh, Kitan question. In uh, 1978, uh, all of his scholarly notes and manuscripts were, uh, were given to the uh, Library of the Hungarian Academy of, uh, Academy of Sciences. And uh, according to his will, uh, the, uh, the notes and manuscripts were kept under embargo uh, until uh, 2017, so until three years ago. So two years ago in, in uh, 2018, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences set up a committee to process these notes. Uh, about this uh, processing, I have uh, uh, written an article, it's in Hungarian, but uh, it, uh, uh, an English version will uh, uh, soon come out. I will tell you about that later. So here are the, the scholarly notes of, uh, of Ligeti. Uh, here is the form that he reconstructed uh, from, the, from the Chinese uh, transcription. So these information are mostly from the Liao Shi and the Qidang Guo Zhi from which he uh, copied the, the transcriptions of, of, the, of the Kitan words in Chinese. So it says, uh, Zhao, uh, it, uh, this is the transcriptive character, so we don't uh, need the Chinese meaning. And here is the Chinese meaning, Bai Shu Ye. It, it says, it means uh, 100, number, uh, 100 as a number. So it says that 100 uh, is, uh, to be pronounced in uh, Kitan as this Chinese character, as this Zhao. And from, th from this, he uh, uh, concluded that the original uh, Chinese, uh, original Kitan uh, uh, pronunciation must have been Zhao. And it is not very far from what we think about uh, uh, the, the Kitan pronunciation now. Uh, as of now, we, we actually think that the pronunciation was actually Zhao, and uh, uh, scholars have already found the matching Kitan small script character, which is this one. So this Kitan character means 100 and has to be uh, pronounced as Zhao. Uh, and we can also find, of course, uh, Mongolian cognates like in Rita Mongol, Jagu, and uh, Hal Zhou, uh, and uh, Daur, uh, which is uh, uh, thought uh, as the closest possible relative, a living relative to Kitan, uh, uh, it is Zhao. Gyurt Kora, uh, an other Hungarian uh, scholar who also uh, visited uh, uh, many times the, the topic of, uh, of the Kitans, 
1975 uh, wrote about uh, a, a, an inscription from 1150, uh, a Kitan inscription. Uh, and this uh, Kitan in inscription was the Xiao Junkung uh, epitaph. Uh, a question, uh, yes. sorry. Uh, now uh, it will be finished, uh, but we have another next uh, Zoom. Mm -hmm. I sent the address uh, to you. Okay, if it, okay. Uh, finish exact. Okay, thanks. Go okay. on, please. Uh, should I go on uh, still? Uh, I guess there's just uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, we can stop and. Okay, I stop now and I, I, I wait yeah, okay. for I wait for the uh, link then. Okay.